Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, this is lecture number two in ethics, uh, drugs, and self harm, and uh, those sort of things. So let me share my screen with you guys, and we'll be off and uh, off and running here. Um, we had gotten through some of the initial things. I'll flow back through them quickly. We looked at uh, different amounts of abuse and use of some of these particular drugs and uh, made some comments about that. And this is where we, uh, we're going to start today. Um, so seniors, which uh, most of you guys are, um, you can see the amount of uh, different drugs used. Note a couple things about this chart. Number one, the blue and the yellow being illicit drugs and pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceuticals just being medicine that uh, someone gets from a pharmacy with a prescription and then illicit drugs being those things that are illegal marijuana and synthetic marijuana in the lead um, and then there's Adderall that we talked about ADHD medicine that allows students to stay up stay awake and uh, spend extra time on papers studying uh, and the like um, and then it just kind of varies from uh, from one thing to another uh, Ritalin, at this, the last one on the list, is also the, the same sort of thing as Adderall. Um, but you'll just note how there's a, a mix of both uh, over the or pharmaceutical um, purchasable uh, prescription drugs and then illegal drugs. Both are problems. Both come up uh, in different uh, studies. Again, this is a little bit older study, as you can see, from 2013. Um, but it's also predictive, and a lot of the newer material has a very similar art to it uh, as these sort of things. And the sad part for me is, is you know, we got seniors in high school and they're already uh, experimenting, working with different drugs, using different drugs. And of course, you know, my, my biggest question will be why, you know, what is it that forces a senior in high school uh, to be taking uh, some of these drugs or want to take some of these drugs? The uh, fascination with wanting to have, uh, these things as part of your experience is, is an interesting concept for sure to talk about. Um, here are some definitions. Um, and well, sorry, one more thing before we get to that. Um, I mentioned this yesterday, but in the early 80s, Nancy Reagan specifically wanted to go to war on drugs. And there are those who would say based on numbers and based on empirical data that we've actually done more harm, meaning drug use has actually been increased because of some of the uh, things that, that we as society has tried to do. Um, again, you have to kind of, you can skew those numbers either way. And so you kind of have to be careful with that. Um, but there is, you know, I think enough data that says that, you know, drug use is more rampant now than it was, or, or at least it's more recordable uh, today. Um, in 2012, 1.5 million Americans were arrested for violating drug law. Um, most of these were for possession. Um, they had marijuana, they had some sort of drug on them. Um, less than 20%, one out of five of those, so uh, 250 million-ish, uh, or 250,000, excuse me, um, were for selling or producing drugs. Um, you know, that, those those numbers tell you some things that tell you that most people that are busted in this war on drugs are the possessors. So now having said that, you have to, to make an argument. Is it is it good to arrest those who are, excuse me, who are possessing drugs? And I think the answer would be, you know, yeah. Um, but that doesn't solve the problem per se. It simply stops that person. They generally, unless they've had multiple uh, arrests for possession, will be back out uh, again soon and without some sort of rehabilitation or drug program in prison, they are very likely to, uh, the recidivism rate is very, very high. So depending on how you deal with that, um, they're probably going to be possessing again. Um, in the United States, uh, attitudes toward drug use and drug enforcement are changing. We're just looking at things differently. Uh, again, this is a twofold thing, the attitude against police, uh, that you guys have experienced in the majority of your teenage years um, through racial tensions and, and such. Uh, plus, with states normalizing and legalizing uh, marijuana use, growth, possession, medicinal, all those things, 
uh, it has certainly uh, changed a lot of attitudes as well. So uh, both of those things are contributing factors to this. Um, so our questions are gonna be in two categories. Number one, is it morally permissible to use illicit drugs? Uh, whether they are prescription or illegal drugs, illicit drugs, is that morally okay for people to be engaging in that sort of behavior? So that's question one. Question two in this chapter is going to be, okay, what about the legality and the social view of that? Uh, is it okay to regulate that? Is it okay to outlaw that or to get rid of that? How should the government and the police and those levels of enforcement respond? Uh, to this sort of thing. Um, here are those definitions. Drug, a non-food chemical substance that can affect the functions and makeup of the body. Uh, this is a really broad definition. Uh, what else could you put under this sort of definition? Uh, maybe not alcohol because we said non-food. Uh, tobacco would fall under this. Um, I, I think alcohol could because most of the time people are not drinking for hydration. You know, they're drinking for the other effects of alcohol. Um, very few people like the taste. It's, it's certainly an acquired taste because of the fermentation. It, it generally does not register highly on a positive taste palette for people. So it's an acquired uh, sort of thing. Uh, but once people acquire it, they do, they do enjoy it. Um, but alcohol could be uh, underneath this, uh, certainly prescriptions, certainly illegal drugs, um, but anything that affects the functions or makeup of the body, HGH, steroids, um, those things could be classified under this. I mean, this is a wide, wide umbrella of things that we would call drugs that would come into a person's body and cause an effect or cause a functional change cause a high of any sort of, of deal. Even caffeine could be listed underneath that because of the stimulant effects of it. So just, just be aware that this is a very, very broad definition. Leading to a drug addiction. Intense craving for a drug and compulsive, uncontrolled use of the drug. Someone is addicted when they are literally harming themselves, but they cannot stop. Uh, people can be addicted to food and they overeat and overeat knowing the effects it's gonna have. People can be addicted to smoking, knowing the effects but cannot stop. So these addictions are from the, the, the substances themselves. That's a whole nother discussion. Should we engage in things that can be addictive for us? Is that a healthy way to live? Is that a morally uh, good way to live, knowing that, hey, these things I'm ingesting are changing me, changing my behaviors, changing my makeup, changing the things that I like and don't like. I think that in of itself is a dangerous area to get into because when you are losing control uh, by whatever definition you want to gauge that, uh, there are problems there. There are difficulties there. And so you're, you're going to want to, to, I would think, steer clear of, of those sort of things if you're losing control. Uh, drug dependence is the step below that. Uh, drug dependence is a condition in which discontinuing the use of a drug is difficult. Uh, there are folks who are dependent upon drugs that maybe are not addicted. Now, the, the, the crossover here is a really uh, shady kind of gray area. It is really hard to say, okay, this person is just dependent, this person is addicted, uh, because there's so much overlap here. Um, because someone who is addicted, if they stop taking it, they have withdrawals the same as a dependent person does. Uh, I suppose for our definition, uh, the two words that we would highlight would be uncontrolled and compulsive. Someone who is dependent uh, still has some control of this. Someone who is addicted has lost that control and lost that ability. So um, again, very similar definitions, but kind of in the, in the same ballpark. Okay, that is a, a good uh, place to stop today. Uh, ethics, what I would like for you guys to do today for an assignment is I want you to uh, research addiction. Uh, I want about a page uh, to two pages on uh, addiction numbers in the United States, things that we are addicted to, different types of addictions, kind of anything in that area. I just want you guys to research addiction a little bit and tell me some uh, information that you find about that. And there will be a spot on Google Classroom uh, for you to turn that in today. So ethics class, we're studying addiction today and just trying to get a good handle on exactly 
what that means. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please know that I am always around. Uh, uh, answer email, be checking email and those sort of things so you can uh, always get in touch with me that way. Uh, hope you guys have a good and godly Tuesday.